Hey everybody, what is up and welcome back to my channel. Guys, please remember as always, if you are new to this channel, do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I wanna share something with you guys. This Wednesday, I'm gonna be in the West Coast of Florida with my older brother. We're gonna go ahead and go on a hog hunt. With that being said, I wanna show you guys my gear setup for hunting. And if you guys are thinking about getting into it and you guys have no idea what type of equipment to grab, go ahead and watch this video. And if you would like, take from my stuff and come up with your own. All right, guys. So this is actually my gear. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and break everything down for you. Let's get going so you can check it Most out. Most important thing I'm going to be taking into the woods is going to be my belt. My belt, the way I have it set up is a different setup from what many other people have. So when you look at the belt, I actually have my belt knife right in here. This one is the tracker knife, my favorite knife. Ever since I used it once, I fell in love with it. Next thing I actually keep on my belt is right in here, which is my actual compass, the way I can navigate through the woods. In here, I have a handsaw. So once you kill an animal, if the animal is too heavy, to be able to drag the animal back with the handsaw. You actually cut off pieces of wood and you find yourself a nice pole you actually tie the animal's legs around the pole and between yourself and another person, you carry it on one shoulder each and you can take the animal out of the woods. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using this because I might have a swamp buggy out there, but if I have to use it, I'm obviously gonna film it and show you guys how to use that little piece of gear that I have in here. I always keep a lighter in case I stay out there overnight and I need to start a fire. I keep my gloves on me with my carabiner And I already covered the knife, okay? First piece of gear that I wanna show you guys that I'm gonna use for my hunting setup. Moving on guys, my second piece of gear is gonna be right here. If you've never seen one of these, this right here is a laser range finder. Now I don't have a real fancy one. However, mine is from Bushnell. The reason why I really like this one is because of this right here, Arc Scout Technology. For you guys that don't know anything about a laser rangefinder, arc scout technology means when I have my laser rangefinder in a straight angle and I'm at higher elevation and I actually aim my laser rangefinder down, as I lace my target out, scout, arc scout technology is gonna actually do the math between the angle or the degree of the angle that my laser rangefinder is angled at and when it shoots down, it's still gonna give me an accurate reading. This one goes up to a thousand yards, okay? One thing about this right here that I like about it is that this is gonna go hand in hand with my rifle. Let's talk about my rifle real quick. Notice right in here, this is called a dope chart. That's actually an acronym for data of prior engagement, D-O-P-E. Most hunters, when they shoot, they take their rifles to the rifle range. They zero the rifle at a hundred yards. And then whenever they're gonna shoot the animal, if the animal is not exactly at a hundred yards, they're gonna be offset aiming, whether it's aiming up or aiming down. By actually having a dope chart on my rifle and bringing a laser rangefinder with me, what I can do is lace my target right through the glass. You're going to have a distance reading of how far your target is from you. Once you found that, you're going to go to your rifle, look for the distance that your target is in, and then you're going to set your dope into your scope. All you have to do now is do your wind reading. Just make sure that you have the right wind and you're gonna go ahead and send it. On well, my dope chart is different. I actually have this rifle zeroed for two different ammos and for one of the ammos to have a zero for a silencer. So on mine, I have it zeroed for Winchester, zeroed for Winchester with a silencer. And on the other side, I have it zeroed for NATO ammunition, 147 grain. Now, when I go hunting, guys, 
I actually do hunt suppressed. So this is my can right here. Silencer cool is a 30 caliber can. Next piece of gear I want to show you guys that I take with me, an anemometer. You don't need to be fancy and have a $700 one. However, when you look at this one and you turn it on, it's going to give you the temperature in Celsius. What I do, I hold it, convert it to Fahrenheit. Why would I use this? I'm an ethical hunter. If I'm not going to shoot to kill on the first shot, I'm not going to take the shot. So what would I do? Once I lace my target, I'm going to check my temperature and my wind. I want to see what type of wind do I have. Do I have an old value? Do I have a quarter value? Do I have a half value? Do I have a full value? And on my rifle, when I zeroed my rifle, I also took into consideration uh, barometric pressure and the temperature. So if I'm going to be hunting on Wednesday and I zeroed my rifle, and I want to say 88 degree temperature, and I'm not going to be sniping nobody. I'm just going to be shooting between 100 to 200 yards. If I zero it at 80 degrees, when I'm going to go hunt, if I'm at 79, 84, 85, because I'm going to be shooting between 100 to 200 yards, I'm not worried about it. All right. All I'm going to do is just check my temperature and I'll be fine. Now, if I zero my rifle at, let's say, 80 degrees, when I'm going to go hunting is 50 degrees. The density in the air temperature is definitely different. So when the round shoots, more than likely it's going to fly through the air a lot more sluggish and fall a little bit short. So if that's the case, before I even shoot at the animal, I would actually just check my zero at a firing range to make sure I'm still on before I take the shot. The last thing as a hunter you want to do is wound the animal to where you have to shoot it a second, maybe even a third time. If you're a hunter and that's how you find yourself, I'm sorry to tell you whether you'll see the video and not like me after it, but you shouldn't be shooting. You need more time in practice of the range or under having a better understanding of ballistics before you actually take that rifle and go out there and stop a beating heart. What I'm gonna be taking is right here, my binos. For this video, I'm not gonna use it. But more than likely, because I'm going with my older brother, I'm going to be taking my spotter school. However, this, I had done a prior video about it. It's very neat. You actually put it on. It hangs right on you. See it right here? And all you do is, you open it. You pull your binos out. They're already strapped into your harness. Check for the animal. When you have an animal... If you're comfortable where you're at, put it back inside. Cinch it down and you, my friend, are golden. And of course, the last thing I'm going to be taking, very important, the ammunition. I'm going to be hunting with a 308. So I have right here my 308 rounds. Now this is Winchester. Since I don't remember exactly what is my bullet weight on this one, I can tell you right now by looking at my rifle. When you grab the rifle, if you want to find out what Winchester round that one is, I'm going to go right here off of my graph. Since I'm telling you guys it's Winchester, let me see if I can pick it up with the rifle. Okay, right here bullet winchester powerpoint 150 grain and i zeroed it at 88 degrees temperature and my barometric pressure on that day was 29.92 mercury inches so now that i know what type of grain it is i already have it saved on my ammo box but i didn't look at it prior to making the video <laughs> But I can already tell you that these right here are your 150 PowerPoint grain from Winchester. So guys, like I said, this is going to be it for this video. This is my hunting setup. I really wanted to share it with you. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. Guys, please take the time to like, comment, share, um, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. If you have more information, more experience, maybe I missed something that some of you guys out there hunting news and I didn't have it on my video, please feel free to share it down with me below in the comment box. So that way any other new shooter, if they're trying to do a similar setup, they can also read your comments and take from what you have and apply it to their setup. Guys, I hope you all have a wonderful time and keep yourself safe out there. Happy Halloween, everyone.